Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today I'll be talking about omega-3 fats, what you haven't heard. I want you to stay tuned for the entire show. As you know, we always have our fun quiz section coming up, and when we're talking about omega-3 fats, there's a lot of confusion as to when somebody says, oh, you have to increase the healthy fats in your diet. Well, today I'll talk about the omega-3s, what they are, their benefits, of course, some of the symptoms if you're deficient in the omega-3s, and some of the best sources as well. So don't forget, like I said, we're coming up to our trivia section towards the end of the show where everybody is now entered in. If you answer the questions, you don't have to answer them cor correctly. There's five quiz questions this week, um, but I just want you to participate. Do your best in the comment section, no matter where you're streaming in on, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or TikTok. Hello to everybody and all my followers and new and old, of course. Uh, just do your best to answer the questions. It doesn't matter if you're correct or not, but you will be put into the pot and randomly selected for that winner. We have one winner every week. So this is what we're drawing for is the Vita Fish Oil, so, which is timely, I think, that we're talking about that today. So if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I am Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and I like to talk about all things natural and natural healing, of course. If you do have questions or comments throughout the show, please be sure to put them in the comment section below and I appreciate all the gifts and the hearts and the thumbs ups and the likes that you can send me throughout the show it always makes it so much more fun for me <laughs> so let's get right into it essential fatty acids you've probably heard of the term EFAs essential fatty acids well they're called essential because our body doesn't produce them yet our body needs them in order for proper functioning so there's two major classes of the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And as you've heard me talk about the PUFAs before, of course, we have our omega-3s and our omega-6s. So the omega-3s include fish oils as well as some of the nuts. So walnut oil, hemp oil, as well as green leafy vegetables do have a little bit of omega-3. And But we'll talk about that in the vegetarian sources and some of the um, drawbacks of the vegetarian sources of the omega-3s. We also have our omega-6s, which includes sunflower oil, as well as canola oil and soybean oil. So those are all examples of omega-6s. Now, the polyunsaturated fatty acids are called the polyunsaturated fatty acids because of their chemical structure. So basically, they're long chains of carbon atoms, which we can see here, and there's a car carboxyl group at one end and a methyl group at the other. You don't need to know any of that chemistry, but most Western and, you know, the more commonly eaten diets here in North America are very much devoid of the omega-3 fats, and that's what runs us the risk now of having this imbalance between our omega-3s and our omega-6 fats, and the correct balance should be about 1 to 3. So your omega-3s to omega sixes is a one to, it should be a one to three ratio, but it's typical that a lot of people eating a North American diet are having a much higher skew towards the omega sixes, and this is where we run into the problems in terms of inflammation, which I'll get to. Now, the polyunsaturated fatty acids are different in terms of their chemical structure and their function as compared to saturated fats and monounsaturated fats. So, when there's two or more double bonds in those chemical structures if we can look at those again really quickly, we can see that wherever those double bonds, so that's like, it looks like an equal sign in those structures, that will determine if it's monounsaturated would have one, and if there's more of those double bonds, then it would be polyunsaturated. Now the omega-3s, or N3s, as they're also referred to, are present naturally in certain foods. So we know that flaxseed and fish naturally have this occurring omega-3, but of course, Course, there are supplements that concentrate the omega-3 and we're going to talk a little bit about you know what you should be looking for in an omega-3 supplement in just a little bit so stay tuned for that because I know a lot of people are asking okay what's the best and how do I take it and how much should I be taking so I'll get to that in just a little bit now there's different types of omega-3s of course that exist so the majority of the scientific research actually focuses on three of the omega-3s so you've probably heard of alpha linolenic acid so ALA as it's called and this contains 18 carbon atoms there's also the E 
EPAs, and these are considered the long chain, um, and they can have 20 carbons. And then, of course, there's the DHA, which is also a long chain uh, fatty acid, and that contains 22 carbons. So the DHA and EPA typically are what you will find in a fish oil supplement, but having the higher skew in the DHA is what I usually recommend, and I'll explain why in, again in just a moment. So these are really important. So in terms of our function of the essential fatty acids, the omega-3s make up our cellular membranes, and this is a phospholipid bilayer on the outside of our cells, and it's really important to maintain that fluidity in that phospholipid bilayer. Now, DHA in particular is especially high in certain tissues of the body. So when we talk about the eye and our eye tissue, it concentrates in the eye, and the highest concentration of DHA in the body is actually in the eye. So that's important to note, as well as in the brain. So the brain also does have a high concentration of DHA and especially the thinking part of the brain. So for our proper cognition and memory, you can, you know, sort of guess some of the symptoms of a DHA deficiency uh, have to do with how well our brain function is working. And believe it or not, our sperm, well, not my sperm, but guy's sperm, <laughs> has DHA, a high concentration of DHA as well. So our omega-3s, uh, again, provide a lot of energy for the body and they're used to form something called eicosanoids in the body. Now, eicosanoids are signaling molecules that have similar chemical structures to fatty acids from which they're derived. So in terms of our cardiovascular system, all our lungs, the pulmonary system, the immune system, and our endocrine systems are, re are reliant on these eicosanoids. And now the eicosanoid breakdown from our omega-6s are different from the omega-3s. So you may have heard that some fats are very inflammatory, and don't get me wrong, a little bit of inflammation is necessary in the body, but too much is not a good thing. And this is where that skew of the higher rate of our omega-6s can run us into difficulties in terms of inflammation. So when we're talking about the eicosanoids made from omega-6s, they cause inflammation, vasoconstriction. So that's something that in terms of our artery health, if they're too constricted, that's not something that we want. And platelet aggregation. So the forming of, you know, platelet um, aggregated lumps and clumps in the arteries, not something that we want in that plaque formation. Now, both classes of fatty acids compete for the same desaturation enzyme. So ALA, again, is a competitive inhibitor of linoleic acid and vice versa. So having the right ratio of these fatty acids is important because they're always competing. So again, numbers win and the more that you have of the, the less inflammatory definitely that will put you further ahead and that's why in terms of taking a fish oil supplement you want to focus on these omega-3s because we tend to get enough of the omega-6s in our diet and we tend to be more deficient especially in that DHA so the EPA and the DHA they can again compete with arachidonic acid again which can be very inflammatory and can then tip the balance more towards the you know either less inflammatory or the more inflammatory state so that's why the ratio you have to kind of pay attention when somebody says or you hear videos about people saying, okay, focus more on the healthy fats, the healthy fats. Well, it's very important as to how much, and it comes down to a science now, to make sure that you're getting enough of the DHA. In my opinion, we tend to be much more deficient, and naturally we're going to get some of those omega-6s, but it's specifically the omega-3, the DHA, which is dicosa hexanoic acid, is really important. And this is present naturally in fish, in fish oils, and krill oil actually has the DHA a as well. Now they are originally, so the DHA is originally made by the microalgae and not by the fish itself. So it comes from, you know, the phytoplankton that of course that the uh, fish now are eating the microalgae and then that concentrates that important omega-3 in their tissues. So that's really important to note uh, in terms of, you know, how it's not necessarily the fish, it's what the fish was eating. So you can understand where a farm fish versus natural fish and their natural habitat and what they're actually ingesting themselves will make a difference in the omega-3 profile as to how much you'll get in a healthy fish. So that's something to think about as well.
If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine and I'm talking about omega-3 fats, what you haven't heard. I hope that you're enjoying the show so far. Hello to everybody on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Hello to... Franca, Elisa from Italy, Arletta from Georgia, USA, and Sonia is here as well. So nice to see you. And that is on Facebook. It's so glad. To, I'm so glad to have you all here. Um, hello, Yulu is here. Chat, Chapping Girl is here. Brent is here. Hello, good morning, good morning uh, on TikTok. It's nice to see you all. So if you do have questions throughout the show, please make sure you're putting in them in the, con uh, in the comment section. After the show, I'll actually stay on live with Instagram and TikTok to answer your questions questions a little bit more after the show because I can't get to everything as you know I'm giving you all the information throughout the show. So DHA I remember again this is the important omega-3 that as humans we tend to be more deficient in well what does it do for us well one of the things that it does is it actually helps in the eye tissue to turn the sunlight energy so you've heard me talk in a lot of videos if you're familiar with you know my videos on YouTube on TikTok Instagram. So that sunlight energy coming to, into our eyes, DHA is needed to turn that sunlight energy into a DC electrical current, which then, and iodine is needed here as well, but then this is what wakes up our, our entire system, our brain, our entire brain chemistry, and everything that happens after that fact is reliant on that sunlight coming in our eyes. So imagine if you're not seeing that sunlight, naturally, you know, maybe you're wearing sunglasses, maybe you've got contacts or, you know, lenses, um, corrective lenses that you wear, you have to get that natural sunlight in your eyes. It's so, so important. And that concentration and making sure you have enough of that DHA, make sure that this is turning that into that electrical current. Now, the highest concentration, as I said, of DHA is located in the eyes, in the central retinal hypothalamic tract, and that connects to the leptin receptor in the hypothalamus. So you can see how all of the content that you've heard me talk about before, it all comes together. I talk a lot about leptin resistance and why that's so important for hormonal health, for weight loss, for inflammation in the body, autoimmune disorders. So this is something that, again, Making sure that you have enough DHA in your diet is really important so that that entire connection happens in terms of your leptin receptor and your brain chemistry as well. Now, DHA makes up more than 30% of the retina. We know that the retina, of course, and those retinal cells are at the back and they're the light sensing cells at the back of the eye. DHA also influences your serotonin receptor in your gut. And of course, we know that our gut is also related to light and it is a light releasing microbiome. So all of those different organisms that we have in our gut actually help to give off light in the gut. So that is important to note as well. You can see how this is all connected and making sure you have enough DHA is super important for your microbiome health as well. Also, we know that DHA helps to increase our insulin sensitivity so that our metabolism of our carbohydrates is regulated. DHA also improves muscle mass. So this is one of the reasons why most bodybuilders actually take fish oil supplements and hopefully they're taking enough DHA. So if you are a bodybuilder, you're wanting to build some muscle mass, making sure that you have a higher skew of that DHA is very important. We also know that DHA protects against non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I've got other YouTube videos all about that, so you can check that out. And did you know that blue light, so from all of your devices, your cell phone, your tablets, your artificial lights in your home, especially the energy efficient ones, that blue light from, you know, artificial light does destroy your DHA. It burns it up really quick. So imagine now your eye tissue, not only have you got all that blue light you know, radiation going in the eye and, and those wavelengths of blue light. But if you're deficient in that DHA, especially in the macula and the retina of the eye, now you really are compromising not only your eye health, but your entire brain health and your hormonal health as well. We also know that prolonged stress will deplete our DHA. So you can see all the reasons why I usually say, you know, humans are much more deficient in the DHA as compared to the EPA. And that's why supplementing with a higher concentration of DHA 
DHA is really important. Now, some of the symptoms of DHA deficiency include poor memory. So remember that DHA concentrates in the brain. So if that memory is failing, you know, whether it's short, usually it's going to be the short-term memory. The long-term memory tends to be better for some people, but that short-term memory, a sign of that DHA deficiency, as well as now the beauty benefits of DHA. So studies have actually been done, and in terms of dry aging skin and the pigmentation of the skin is definitely related to DHA. And in this study, we can see that cosmetic and therapeutic applications of fish oils, fatty acids on the skin and the supplement to ameliorate the severity of some skin disorders such as photo aging, skin cancer, allergy, dermatitis, cutaneous wounds, and melanogenesis. So again, those the dark pigmentation of the skin and that was ameliorated with you know people that were having more of those omega 3s the DHA and the EPA we also know that DHA is very restorative to normal skin functions. So if you get a lot of rashes, things like eczema, psoriasis, those dry, rough patches often is an indication of too much of the omega-6s, not enough of the omega-3s, the DHA and the EPA. Hair loss can be related to a DHA deficiency. This is really common. We know that in pregnancy, often, you know, after the baby is born, a woman will lose a lot of her hair. And that's because the baby basically takes most of and a lot of the DHA and the EPA for their own spinal cord and brain function from the mom when they're born and now there's this relative loss and that's why often a lot of women because of this uh, omega-3 deficiency will lose a lot of hair after pregnancy but even regular you know everyday hair loss can be related to a DHA deficiency as well depression so low mood so again thinking back to brain function and brain chemicals uh, and all of those dopamine receptors and our serotonin as it was related to the gut is related to DHA as well. Weight gain, so we know that because of the leptin signaling, DHA deficiency will not, you know, be your best bet in terms of your leptin resistance, so that's important as well. And poor nerve function, so numbness, tingling, those sensations, as well as when we think of the optic nerve in the eye, poor vision is related, again, to a DHA deficiency as it's related to, um, you know, that nerve function as well. So, as well as macular degeneration, because remember the DHA concentrates at the back of the eye. Learning disabilities and, you know, difficulties, so ADD, ADHD can also be related in it and really, you know, seeing a marked difference in terms of functionality and I, you know, with my patients, um, I really saw a huge difference in children and their attention when we started supplementing them, especially with a highly concentrated DHA. It, it turns things around within as little as a week, so that's really important for parents that are wondering, you know, natural, we're asked all the time you know, what's something natural that I, I can give to my child to really help with attention and focus um, and maybe some hyperactivity as well. DHA is, is, you know, top of the list. Sleep disturbances as well can be related to a DHA deficiency, insomnia, allergies, sore joints. So remember that the omega-3s, especially the DHA EPA, have that more anti-inflammatory effect when we talk about the eicosanoid breakdown. So that's really important. So it's sore joints, gout pain, inflammation can really be dramatically helped with taking your omega-3s. Cardiovascular disease, we know high blood pressure as well. Diabetes, because remember that relationship to in insulin sensitivity and a low vitamin D3. So your active conversion to your vitamin D3, so the active form of vitamin D, you know, through natural sunlight exposure, if you're deficient in vitamin in your DHA, your omega-3s, then you can have a compromised vitamin D level as well. So if if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine. I'm talking about omega-3 fats, what you haven't heard. It's nice to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Sonia's got a question. Arletta has a question. Um, okay. So these are great questions. So let me take a look. Okay. So Sonia's asking, you've been getting an omega-369, but recently got 3679. Is it better to just get DHA product? Um, yes. So is there a specific product? Yes, I'm going to get to that, Sonia, absolutely, because I, I do highly recommend going a higher skew of the DHA. 
if that makes sense. Because usually in the diet, you are eating, you know, certain foods, which we're going to talk about the list in just a second, that you're going to be getting more of the omega-6s naturally. It's very difficult to get enough of the DHA. So supplementing the DHA is the way, that's what that's what I do. In my opinion, it's the best way to go and where I always had the most success with my, with my patients. Uh, Arletta is asking, what is the best cooking oil during this time of year? Great question. So depending, that really depends on where you live. So if you're in a hotter climate, you can get away with the coconut oils and, you know, anything that grows around you would be a healthier oil to consume. If you're further north um, in terms of your latitude or very south away from the equator, then you want to go more with the inherent natural fats that would be available to you. So that is often animal fats and butter and ghee so a clarified butter may be better in the colder months so um and you know fish oil naturally occurring from from fish and seafood as well great questions though i love those yeah great 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 and continue to ask your questions as the show is going on everyone because i love to see your questions i know there's um a lot of questions happening on TikTok as well okay so vegetarian so i always get this question what do vegetarians what's the best vegetarian source of dha well definitely it's been studied that you know vegetarians tend to be low in dha so even more important as vegetarians and vegans to in make Make sure that you're getting enough DHA in your diet and some of the breakdown, you know, products of DHA. So we know that the ALA can be converted to EPA and then EPA is then converted to DHA. And in that breakdown process, this occurs primarily in the liver. So having proper liver function is important. That's why I'm all about, you know, doing regular detoxes, including a liver detox at least three to four times a year. Very important. But that conversion is only about two to five percent to that DHA. I've heard even lower statistics like 0.1 to 0.5 percent conversion of the EPA to the DHA. So it really does depend on your overall health, but that conversion is very small. And that's why, and it, it's reliant on a certain enzyme, it's called the delta-5 desaturase enzyme, which is needed for this conversion to happen from the EPA to the DHA. And this is one of the reasons why people eating just a vegetarian diet are severely deficient in the DHA, because maybe that conversion isn't happening happening with that enzyme as well as what it should be. Now, it's important that as well, you know, other factors that can influence this conversion include, you know, other nutrient deficiencies, your genetics, um, how healthy you are in general, and your sex. So women tend to convert significantly more of the ALA to the DHA than young men, and this has been studied. And of course, Mother Nature doesn't make mistakes. We know why, because you know, passing on that DHA to their baby through lactation, so through the breast milk, is very important. And that's one of the reasons that it's believed that women, young women typically will have a better conversion rate of the EPA to the DHA. So another, you know, thing in terms of statistically significant um, numbers, which we'll show you and I'll share with you in terms of DHA deficiency and vegetarians, is that omnivores tend to have the highest both EPA and DHA levels as compared to vegetarians. Now the numbers, you know, and then as compared to vegans. So as an example, omnivores um, in terms of their DHA levels at 1.69 milligrams per liter, whereas vegetarians were at 1.16 and vegans only 0.7. So a dramatic drop off for, you know, strict vegans in terms of their DHA levels. So that's something to consider, you know, making sure that you are covering up your bases for your DHA supplementation. Now, there are some natural DHA sources, vegetarian sources. So at the top of the list would be algae, seaweed, as well as spirulina, flax seeds, chia seeds will give you some DHA, hemp seeds, walnuts, and Brussels sprouts. But again, the ratios and the amounts are very low as compared to, you know, if you're getting it from non-vegetarian sources, which I am going to share now. So what are the best sources of DHA? Of course, if you're not a vegetarian, and these are all in grams per three ounce serving. So at the top of the list is salmon at 1.22 grams per three ounce serving. Atlantic herring, 0.94, as well as sardines, 
pink salmon, 0.63, and Atlantic mackerel, so 0.59 grams per three ounces, sea bass at 0.47 grams per three ounces. Now, in terms of other sources, rainbow trout, so you see it's a, a lot of seafood, um, and that's why you've heard me talk about seafood, and finding the healthier sources, of course, with less of the toxicity components and the heavy metals is important when you are choosing your seafoods. Oysters are on the list as well. Light tuna shrimp one of my favorites not as high as the fish um, but still does give you some DHA Pacific cod is on the list yellowfin tuna eggs so one egg has 0.03 uh, you can buy some higher DHA eggs um, with for your omega-3s that you know in terms of the what the chickens were fed tends to be higher in DHA so that would be a consideration as well and chicken breast is on the on the list as well but it's 0 0.02 grams per three ounce serving so not not a lot um, your fish is definitely going to give you a higher source but what I do to cover my bases and to help with my skin and inflammation and to help with longevity and my eyesight and you know all of those benefits that I talked about for taking your DHA I take a strong concentrated fish oil supplement that's higher in the DHA so it's a 40 to 10 ratio of the DHA to the EPA there's still some EPA in there your other omega-3 but some of the things to look for when you are looking for a fish oil supplement is something called the IFOS rating. So this is the International Friends of the Sea rating, and you want to look for a very high rating. So the best is a five-star rating, and this is something that's tested for active ingredients, also testing for contaminants, which is a problem. We know mercury and other, you know, PCBs, dioxins can commonly be found in, you know, lower-grade fish oil supplements they're not necessarily going to tell you, right, that it's been molecular distilled, and that's another thing to look for, but also they may not do the testing. So that's why you, you do have to pay a little bit more to get a good high-quality DHA supplement. And, of course, stability is tested as well. You want to make sure that your fish oil supplement is not oxidized. It goes rancid very quickly, how it's stored, how it's packaged, how it's transported. These are all very important. So if you, you know have a sensation of a very fishy smell or taste in a fish oil supplement, that's probably meaning that it's oxidized, it's gone rancid, and should not be ingested. So you've got to be very careful with your fish oil supplements. You also want to make sure you're taking a fish oil supplement that doesn't have any fillers. And it's also nice to have, you know, one that doesn't taste bad so that's something else to look for so we'll put I promise in our YouTube video we'll put links to the ones that I take um, so that you can appreciate the benefits of that so today we talked all about omega-3s and what you haven't heard I hope that you learned something new and you know you'll make some choices in terms of your own diet you can always refer back to this video on YouTube and make some choices for your own health so that you know you're upping your DHA especially in my opinion that's the best thing you can do for your health and you'll see the difference I mean quite literally in your eyesight you'll see the difference your skin you know that skin barrier function will be optimized pigmentation hair loss I mean all of those symptoms that I talked about in terms of notice how I go to the beauty benefits never mind your heart and your <laughs> your arteries now you won't perceive those as well but you know blood pressure and things as well but yeah the beauty benefits you will definitely see those benefits especially if you're low in DHA to begin with okay so let's see we're gonna go into quiz section right now uh, you're so welcome user 808 thank you for commenting I'm glad that um you're enjoying the information okay so this is quiz section remember we're playing for this the vita fish oil timely um, uh, this is from our great sponsors at Vita Tree who sponsor this show. So this is, again, something that you don't have to answer the questions correctly. Just do your best. Just pre write, put anything down in terms of your answer, especially if you're new to the channel. Now, those of you who are my great students, you've been on the, you've watched the show for months and months now. You, you know the game. You know where I get my questions from. So. You'll, you'll learn. If you're new and you're a new follower, thank you for following. You'll, you'll learn. Um, but just and make sure you're following Team Dr. J9 if you are in TikTok, because if you are a winner from TikTok, we have to be able to reach you. Um, so follow Team Dr. J9 so that we can reach you if you are our lucky winner. Okay, are we ready? True or false? This is question number one. True or false? Quercetin 
is produced by the human body. True or false? Let's see what we got here. Um, Malbert. Callan, good try. Julie, good try. Brent, good job. Steve, good job. Um, SVX, good try. Liz M. Rock, hello, hello. Good job. Sabina, good try. Um, Baby Joy, good try. Keep trying. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Arletta, good job. On uh, Facebook, right? Yes. Anybody else? Um, Jamila, good job. Elsie Castles, hey, how are you? And I'm glad that Jamila's here too. Nice to see you. Um, Nisha, good. KQN68 on Instagram, good job. Nadia on Instagram, hello, nice to see you both. Good job. Uh, Parnell, good job. Stacy, good job. Um, SVX, yeah, good, good answer. Yes, okay, so the answer is, anybody else, last, last little attempt? Sonia, good job. On Facebook, Franca, good job. Uh, did I miss anybody? Yeah, okay. So the um, Fed, Fed Delicious 4, good job. Stacy Need 353, three. good job. So the answer is false. So quercetin is not produced by the human body. So it's important maybe to take a look at my last week's show all about quercetin and a lot of the benefits of quercetin. Um, it's a great thing that you can add, especially, you know, as a supplement, but it's a great anti-inflammatory, antihistamine, anti-cancer effects, antiviral effects. It's awesome. Okay. Question number two. Are we ready? Name a good food source of quercetin. Name a good food source of quercetin. Let's see who's quick on this one. Liz M. Rock, good job. Uh, Malbird, good job. Nice. Very good. Anybody else? Yeah, user 9417, good job. Uh, Kaylin, job, good job. Baby Joy, good job. Very good. KQN68, good job on Instagram. Um, Jamila, good job with the question mark. I like that. Uh, not, not too confident in your answer, but I, you put it down, so that was good. Awesome. Parnell, good job. Baby Joy. Um, Stacy's Need, good job. Julie's Nature, uh, good. You eat tons. Julie's Nature, awesome. Elsie Castles. I'm not sure what that is. Am I missing something? Um, Okay, there. Okay, I think it was the first one was a spell correct. <laughs> Good job. Um, Brent. Yes, Nadia on Instagram. Good job. Brent, good job. Nisha, good job. Jamila, good job. Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. I love how you help each other. That's so nice. Um, Bear19660. Actually, I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure. Anybody else? Oh, here we go. Arletta, Franca, um, good job on Facebook. Liz, good job. Arletta again, good job. Oh, there's multiple answers. Sonia, good job. Um, <laughs> Sonia, <laughs> jokes. Sonia's doing not cutie citrus. That's good. Um, official Christian, hey, how are you? Christian's back. Nice to see you. It's been a long time. Hope you're well. Awesome, awesome. We're doing, we're in quiz section right now. Um, name a good food source of quercetin. Uh, Nishan, good job. Sabina, good job. Anybody else? Uh, let's see. I think we got everybody. Yes, so there's multiple. So elderberry, juice or concentrate, onions, capers, uh, highest of the list that I shared in the show. Um, chives, um, zucchini, I'm not sure. That one I have to look up. Shallots, absolutely. Um, most people said grape skin as well, good job. Apple skins, yes, berries uh, as well. So great, great answers, everyone. I'm actually, I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought that that was, that was a tough question. Okay, how's our time? Good. Question number three, fill in the blank. 
quercetin is a zinc blank. This one's tricky. Fill in the blank. Quercetin is a zinc blank. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Diane, you had a good answer as well. Garlic for the quercetin. Um, and Sterling Dove Boutique. Yes, yeah, stay, stay. We'll talk about that. Um, after the quiz section is done. So stay, stay on the line. After I say goodbye on YouTube, please stay on TikTok and Instagram and I can answer some of those questions. Okay. Um, Jamila, uh, yeah, j that's, that's good. That's a good answer. Absolutely. I'm looking for a specific word, but you don't have to give me. Actually, you're, you're completely right. KQN? KQN 68 has it? Oh, that's good. I'm impressed. That's, yeah, that's good. Oh my goodness. Arletta, good job as well. Yeah, I'm getting a few good answers here. My students are so good. I'm so proud of you. This is so awesome. Anybody else? Quercetin is uh, Liz M. Rock. Good try. Uh, Nadia has it on, on Instagram as well. Good job. Wow. Um, anybody else? I know it's hard. Okay, so we had a few um, correct answers. Uh, so quercetin is a zinc, I was looking for the word ionophore, but a zinc channel, a zinc carrier, um, because zinc doesn't naturally get into the cell very well, so it needs something to, to help to bypass and get into the cell. So that's why quercetin helps to open up that channel. It's a zinc ionophore. So good job, everyone. I'm very, very impressed. Good job. Okay, question number four, true or false? Quercetin is a natural anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. This one, so we went from hard to super easy. Um, TikTok has it? Yes. So Julie's Nature, good job. Melbourne, good job. Raina, good job. Um, Crate with Barb, good job. Fedalicious, KQN on Instagram, good job. User941, good job. SVX, good job. Um, Calamari just joined. <laughs> we were just talking about you. No, I'm kidding. We are talking about seafood. But thanks for joining. This is the Dr. Janine Show. We're in the quiz section. Uh, Nadia has it on Instagram as well. Okay, again, the question was true or false? Quercetin is a natural anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. Yes, good job, Stacy's Needs, Sterling Dove Boutique. Uh, Franca, good job. Arletta, good job on Facebook. Sonia, good job as well. Anybody else going to take a stab at it? Bear, good job. Um, Raina, thanks for the... <laughs> Thanks for answering questions. That's so nice. Kaylin, good job. Um, anybody else? Okay, it's, of course, it's true. Quercetin is a great natural anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. Okay, question number five, final question. So just do your best. Even if you haven't put an answer in yet, you still could be randomly selected to win a prize. This prize, the Vita Fish Oil. Okay. Last question. Oh, this is really hard. What is the source of quercetin that Dr. Janine takes? What is the source? So not the brand, the source. The source of quercetin that I take. This is, this one is tough. Um, Jamila, good try. Good try. It's not, it's not right, but good try. Um, what is the source of quercetin that I take? Um, Kaylin, mm, good try. I, I do take that in another formulation, but um, Melbert has it? Melbert has it? Melbert has it. On TikTok? Yeah. Melbert got it. Yay! Melbourne, wow. That is, yeah, wow, 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 wow. 
I'm impressed. Raina, good try. <laughs> Raina, you have no idea? That's okay. That's honest. Honest answer. Brent, yeah, good try. I actually, it's it's partially true, Brent. Um, and the other person that had that answer. Uh, Steve is clapping for Melbourne. I know, this is awesome. Uh, and Kalan, job TQ, yeah, you're you're partially right. Absolutely. But the highest concentration of the course in that I take is... Yeah, I don't think anybody else is going to get the answer. Unless everybody just looks at Melbourne's answer, which is correct. Sephora japonica, which is a tree. It's a beautiful plant and that is highly concentrated in quercetin. So that's in um, one of the products that I take. So yeah, so that was great, guys. Good job, everybody. Arletta, yeah, okay, yeah, you are totally right on Facebook. Um, Absolutely, those are the products, but uh, yeah, the actual source of the plant is the Sephora Japonica. So thank you so much to everybody who tuned in today. It was a great show. I'm so glad to have had you all here. And yeah, so this is the Dr. Janine Show. Today we talked all about the benefits of omega-3s, the, some of the sources of omega-3s, why it's so important, you know, that you are upping your, especially your DHA, which as humans we tend to be more deficient in for our eye health, of course, for our brain health, and as a natural anti-inflammatory for our skin, for pigmentation. So if you do have more questions please stay on the line i will stay on with TikTok and instagram in just a moment as i close the show for facebook and youtube it was a pleasure to have you all here if you're new to my channel please make sure that you subscribe turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell so that you're always aware of my newest and latest uploads i appreciate the shares of my videos and the thumbs up as well and to you know always remember to take care of your good health so i do have you know a mission in life Life, and it's to empower you to live a healthy lifestyle and of course to do it naturally. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.